Well, it looks like I made it all the way to May of 2022 before I finally gave up and decided to make a video about critical race theory, or CRT, the latest straw-filled boogeyman being attacked by whatever alt-right morons haven't died of COVID yet. I didn't feel it was my place to comment on it before because from the moment it came up, you know, there's a pretty easy response to Republicans crying about CRT being taught to children. It isn't. The end. Like, seriously, while most of its critics cannot give a cogent explanation for what CRT even is, it actually does have several explicit definitions. Thinking critically about the institutions we've built up that uphold the continued oppression of marginalized people, basically. Uh, this is something that we don't generally expect the average eight-year-old to understand and engage with. It's something that adult intellectuals discuss. Arguing that CRT doesn't belong in primary school is like arguing that theoretical physics doesn't belong in primary school. Like, yes, we agree. In order to be able to continue crying about CRT, though, its critics then decided that teaching kids anything about America's very obvious racist history should be considered CRT, and also shouldn't happen. Like when one group claimed a biography of Martin Luther King Jr. was CRT and should be banned. So to extend the metaphor, this is how that went. Don't teach theoretical physics to children. Okay. Yeah, we don't, we don't do that. Yes, you do. My son just came home with this worksheet. Uh, that's algebra? Exactly. Algebra is fundamental to theoretical physics. Uh, also, algebra sounds super Muslim. Let's get rid of it. The math metaphor isn't just a random choice on my part. It's at the forefront of my brain because Florida's Ron DeSantis, the governor I probably talk about more than any other politician on this channel, has condemned the publishers of math textbooks for attempting to use critical race theory to indoctrinate students, elementary school students, math textbooks for kindergarten through fifth grade, eighth grade, maybe. That's it, like ages four to 10, he's saying. Uh, their math textbooks are trying to indoctrinate them. According to a press release put out last month, the DeSantis administration claimed that they rejected 41% of math textbooks this year, half of which were rejected because they incorporate prohibited topics or unsolicited strategies, including CRT. I'll be honest, I don't remember my math textbooks from when I was 10, but I'm pretty sure I would recall if the word problems about the 2.30 train from Chicago also explored how colorblind legislation actually upholds racist power structures. But according to DeSantis, it's happening. It seems that some publishers attempted to slap a coat of paint on an old house built on the foundation of Common Core and indoctrinating concepts like race essentialism, especially bizarrely for elementary school students. Okay, so what were the examples of CRT in math textbooks for elementary school students? Well, that's tough to answer because according to DeSantis' own textbook reviewers, there weren't any. Judd Legum of Popular.info says, each of the 16 reviews addressed the following question. Do materials align to rule blah blah, which prohibits critical race theory in instructional materials? Here are all 16 answers from the 16 different reviewers. No CRT evident. No mention of CRT. No materials reviewed demonstrated CRT. No CRT concepts. No CRT present. None found. The material prohibits CRT in all the instructional materials. CRT not evident in student edition or teacher's edition. None present. Couldn't even spell it right. CRT not found in the materials. Not seen. Yes, they align. No evidence of CRT. I did not see evidence that this was violated. No presentation of CRT in materials. Does not include. After Legum posted this, the press secretary for the Florida Department of Education contacted him to say that he was very misleading because, quote, even if a textbook reviewer specifically wrote no CRT, it was still evidence of CRT if the reviewer gave the textbook a four, good alignment, instead of five, very good alignment. 
When Legum asked for evidence of CRT in the textbooks that the reviewers marked as no CRT, there was a lot of back and forth before they insisted that this was the evidence that supported their claim. Four out-of-context photos of textbooks sent to them by the general public. So not necessarily all examples from the textbooks that DeSantis was bashing. None of which, in any of these examples, uh, are from textbooks for kids in elementary school. At least two of them are obviously written for high school teachers. DeSantis's press secretary also added this damning photo of a homework assignment given to some high school students in Missouri for which the school district apologized and then clarified was unapproved and not part of the curriculum. The Florida textbook reviewers did claim to find CRT in high school textbooks, but it turns out that most of the problematic textbooks were identified by one guest reviewer by the name of Chris Allen. She's a member of the anti-CRT activist group Moms of Liberty, which is the group I referenced earlier who claimed a biography of MLK was CRT that should be banned. Wow, I'm shocked that she found problematic things in high school textbooks. Come to think of it, I'm genuinely shocked she didn't go over to the elementary school textbooks and find problematic things there. Like, surely there's a first grade book with a white boy giving a black boy two bananas or something. Obviously an endorsement of reparations. But yeah, Alan said that she's the one who snapped two of the photos that the Department of Education's website claimed supported their assertion that textbooks were indoctrinating children in kindergarten through fifth grade but she only looked at high school textbooks. So that's a lie, I guess. So why did DeSantis's administration even spread this ridiculous lie? Well, just ask prominent CRT critic Chris Rufo, who the New Yorker credits with starting the anti-CRT trend. According to that piece, he's quite open about his goals. As Rufo eventually came to see it, conservatives engaged in the culture war had been fighting against the same progressive racial ideology since late in the Obama years, without ever being able to describe it effectively. We've needed new language for these issues, Rufo told me when I first wrote to him late in May. Political correctness is a dated term and, more importantly, doesn't apply anymore. It's not that elites are enforcing a set of manners and cultural limits. They're seeking to re-engineer the foundation of human psychology and social institutions through the new politics of race. It's much more invasive than mere correctness, which is a me mechanism of social control, but not the heart of what's happening. The other frames are wrong, too. Cancel culture is a vacuous term and doesn't translate into a political program. Woke is a good epithet, but it's too broad, too terminal, too easily brushed aside. Critical race theory is the perfect villain, Rufo wrote. In March of 2021, Rufo tweeted, The goal is to have the public read something crazy in the newspaper and immediately think, critical race theory. We have decodified the term and will recodify it to annex the entire range of cultural constructions that are unpopular with Americans. They turned the academic study of systemic racism into a Trojan horse that could nearly fit in any conservative ideology they'd like. Remember that when you see the usual outlets uh, continuing to tell America's most credulous sheeple that elementary school children are being indoctrinated into a CRT cult by math textbooks. If you see someone repeat that lie, know that it's not really about math textbooks in Florida. It's about the alt-right censoring everything they hate about a progressive society and sowing distrust in our education system. 